Hey friendly people, today I'm reacting to a video by Courtney Ryan titled Six Traits That Make You Magnetic and Women Always Notice. So the first trait I want to talk about that makes people magnetic is authenticity. And I know that sounds cliche and you've probably heard it a million times, but I do think this is one of the most important things when it comes to being magnetic to others or drawing in the right people to you, right? Is being yourself and being authentic. Magnetic people aren't fake because they don't need to be, which is why authenticity is so important here. You shouldn't have to pretend to be someone you're not to get people to like you. I've said this a ton on my channel because I think a lot of us get caught up in people pleasing and trying to act like someone we're not in order to attract a certain type of person. And while I do think you should be what you want to attract, it should also be genuine and authentic. So why does authenticity make you magnetic? Because true authenticity shows confidence and security in yourself. And instead of saying confidence, like everyone else says, like you've heard on every list on the internet, I think that true confidence stems from authenticity and being secure and comfortable in your own skin and not being afraid what anybody else thinks about that. I agree that a large part of confidence stems from you trying to show up more honestly in both your words and your actions as often as possible. And here she calls it authenticity, but I would call it integrity. Because when you do that, you are telling your subconscious that I am good enough as I am and that I can handle anything that comes my way. And as Courtney said, like attracts like. So if you're putting on a mask all the time, then the only types of people you will connect with will be people that appreciate that fake version of yourself and you won't actually make meaningful connections with people that share similar values or that appreciate and respect the real person that you are. Instead, you should be focusing on trying to present that authenticity, even if you might be afraid of being judged because you will quickly screen out the wrong people for you to focus on the right ones. And one reason that she didn't cover that I feel makes authenticity so magnetic to almost everybody is the sense of trust. If I'm talking to somebody and I feel like they're truly present and bearing their soul, I can start to trust them and do the same. I am much more likely to do business with somebody that I feel like I can trust. I am much more likely to make friends with somebody that I feel like won't stab me in the back. And women want to date men that they feel like they can trust in the long term. They want to know that you'll show up in the hardest moments of life, that you'll stand up and protect her and your family, and that you will lead them forward to build a great life together because you believe in yourself. Number two, we've got humor, and this one is pretty straightforward because everyone likes someone that can make them laugh. Humor can also make people feel a lot more comfortable around you, like they can let their guard down a little bit, they can get to know you, they can be themselves, they don't have to be so uptight or straight-laced around you if you're super serious all the time. Um, so definitely adding in a little bit of humor or just really showcasing your personality makes people drawn to you. Again, going off of that authenticity factor that I mentioned before, humor is a great way to show your playful side or show that you're not just a robot um, that's very intimidating to talk to or something like that. So don't be afraid to showcase your personality and have a little bit of fun. Again, you don't need to be the guy that's cracking a joke every line or trying to make everything you say a punchline that's actually the opposite of magnetic and comes off like you're trying a little bit too hard. That's a really important point there she made at the end. You shouldn't just like try to be the clown all the time and make everyone laugh if that's not you. And in fact, people who often do that and are trying to always be the center of attention are struggling with their own self-worth and just usually seeking approval from others. Instead, what you should do is just try to make yourself laugh sometimes because that's all you know in that moment is like you don't know what the other person finds funny. You know what you find funny. And if you lean into that a little bit, then hopefully the person on the other side of the table will appreciate that humor. And again, if they don't, then maybe you guys aren't compatible. So it's important to realize that humor isn't one little box of like what type of guy you should be, but rather it's an infinite spectrum of styles of like cynical and silly and over the top and playful and teasy. So so what you should figure out is how do I like to actually engage like friends that I'm already funny with? What kind of humor do I like to watch or, or digest on my own? Experiment a little bit and figure out what your specific style is and how frequently you just want to mess around and get silly. Number three is good communication and listening. Interestingly enough, something as simple as just listening can make people feel more engaged in a conversation with you, makes them feel special, and makes them feel like you're listening to what they're saying, and is going to do good things for you in return. People who show interest in others often seem more interesting themselves because they're being open-minded, they're asking questions, they're curious, they're trying to get to know you. Not only does that help you for your own life, but it also makes that other person you're talking to feel like you care, it makes them feel special, 
special and makes them walk away from a conversation with you feeling like you genuinely tried to understand them or listen to what they were saying. There's nothing magnetic about having a conversation with someone who doesn't ask you any questions about yourself, who sits there and talks about themselves the entire time, who acts like they know everything. That is legitimately the polar opposite of magnetic and is going to make people not want to talk to you or be around you. If you regard everyone you talk to as an opportunity to learn and just go into a conversation assuming that everyone has something interesting about them that you can get to know, it's going to make that conversation and genuine interest feel a lot more genuine and flow a lot more naturally. This is one of the most important and common pieces of advice you hear in social skills, and yet it's one of those things that so many people just really don't do. People have a really hard time deferring their own interests or not needing somebody else's approval when they're talking to new people. And yet, you have to realize that everybody at the end of the day is most concerned about themselves. So when you go walk up to somebody else, they're also in that same headspace of sometimes feeling nervous or worried about how they're coming across or being judged. And the best way that you can drop their guard and really allow them to connect with you is to show them how warm and excited you are about getting to know them. People just want to be accepted and appreciated. No matter how interesting or cool or funny you think you might be, if people don't walk away from an interaction with you feeling like you actually cared about them, it's much less likely that they're going to start to care about you. Doing this is also one of the best ways to mitigate your social anxiety as well. Because if you're going into the interaction worried about like how perfect you sound and if you're really keeping somebody engaged or not, that is a huge source of anxiety where you're trying to figure out how the other person feels and we just don't know that. We can't read somebody else's mind. But instead, if you just focus on being curious and listening and showing interest and digging into somebody, you can almost always trust, even on a gut level, that you are making a positive impression. Number four, we've got healthy optimism. So being light and keeping things positive is going to make people feel refreshed and energized when they're talking to you. Being the person who tries to come up with solutions instead of constantly talking about the negatives or complaining makes you a lot more positive and uplifting to be around and is refreshing when other people are talking to you. If this is something you struggle with, try to develop a forward thinking mentality. So what can I do to move things forward instead of dwelling on the past? What can I do to focus on the positives here rather than the negatives that are just going to hold me back? If you're in a conversation with someone who is constantly complaining, always playing the victim, or just really an energy vampire, this is not going to make you magnetic. It's again going to make you the opposite of magnetic. Give me your life force energy. Okay, but seriously though, she's right here. Like you don't have to pretend to be fake positive or optimistic and you don't even have to avoid negative subjects or even the occasional complaint about things. Like people definitely do bond over negative experiences and negative shared emotions. The bigger point is it just can't be the dominant driving force and it can't be that frequent. And people feel like you have to like have a forward thinking mindset or have solutions at hand and not like you're just wallowing in pain and also expecting them to fix your problems for you. Then people just feel all this like weight and pressure and they can't imagine what an awesome experience would be like with you. Plus we're empathetic and we naturally mirror people. So if you're just like harboring all these negative feelings, that's largely how somebody's gonna feel around you and they're gonna associate those feelings with you. Number five is well-spoken and knowledgeable. If you can bring something to a conversation, whether it be passing on knowledge, the curiosity to learn, etc., it makes you more interesting and magnetic. And this often leads to a more meaningful conversation. Being well-spoken and the way that you carry yourself makes the world of a difference when you're first meeting someone. This could be for first impressions or really just you in general and making people trust you, listen to you, and feel drawn to you. This requires practice for a lot of people and doesn't always come naturally. So if you're in that boat, don't feel bad about it. Again, this is something that a lot of us have to practice and work on and you get better as time goes on and you spend time on it and practice. But I really do think it is worth the time and attention to spend time learning this skill. How you present yourself becomes reality. And that doesn't just mean choosing the right words, but rather how you say the things that you're expressing. And that's why for 15 years, I hammer in the importance of things like body language and eye contact and vocal tonality, because those first impressions are gonna formulate how people see you in their heads for the rest of the conversation and beyond. Luckily, tying it back to what Courtney said, if you are knowledgeable about certain subjects and you intentionally bring those things up in conversation, then you'll naturally speak with more passion and excitement and it'll show in your nonverbal communication without you even trying. I bet all of you know of situations where somebody asks you something about an idea that you deeply care about and you could go on a crazy rant for like 10 minutes straight and you are at your absolute most charismatic. And that leads me into my next point here, which is curious and empathetic. 
You can learn a lot by simply just being curious and interested in other people. One of the best ways to show curiosity and empathy is by asking people questions, listening to what they're saying, and really try to get to know them on a deeper level. People who are not interesting or magnetic don't bring anything to a conversation and just expect the other person to do all the work or ask all the questions, and that does not make you magnetic at all. So again, ask people questions, try to get to know them, be genuinely curious, and this is naturally going to drive your conversations. Empathy shows that you care and you're genuinely trying to get to know someone rather than being standoffish or acting cold with them. It shows that you're sincere and compassionate, which are all traits that we can find in people who are magnetic or charismatic or who draw people in around them. So since we already talked about the curiosity side, let me give you a couple of practical ideas on making your questions that much better and naturally building empathy into them. One of the simplest ways to do that is to make sure that at least a good amount of your questions are open-ended and focused on getting to people's emotions and experiences rather than just the facts of something. Like it's way better to ask somebody what inspired them to get into photography in the first place rather than how long they've been doing it. This allows the person to really open up and share a lot about themselves and often get a little bit more personal, which then gives you more content to be curious about and dig in further. Additionally, I would say ask questions that you actually give a shit about. That will naturally make you more empathetic because you'll be invested in the answers instead of just asking random questions to fill a void and forcing yourself to pay attention. Like if you don't care about how long somebody stayed in a country, but would rather know about their wildest and craziest nights out, then ask them about that. That will generally yield much more interesting conversations that you'll actually care and show genuine interest in. And if you want to appear more attractive to everybody you meet, then check out my video here where I talk about why your first impressions turn people off. Take care and love your fellow humans.